So you've still got 155% defined somewhere, but that's a big boost. That's a big boost on top of the crazy amount of health you're going to have, the crazy amount of fortify you're going to have. Hey guys, Dantix here. So I'm incredibly pumped for Diablo 4, and I found myself diving so far into this game that I decided for fun, I'm going to make some guides. Now, I know I'm late to the party with class guides, and that typically means less views, but trust me when I say that this will be a lot more in-depth than anything you've seen so far. I'm going to be covering the best builds, what skills you should get, how they work together, what aspects you should get and look out for, and the Paragon board and how it all works together. Doing this will make combos that just click in a way that didn't before. So let's exhaustively check out what this class has to offer. Before we start, if you want to win yourself a copy of Diablo 4 thanks to NVIDIA, be sure to stick around till the end of the video. The NVIDIA 40 series graphics cards makes the game look absolutely delicious. You can play on 4K with DLSS 3, which is essentially AI that fills in the gaps and makes your frame rate absolutely incredible. If you want to check out just how it looks during the server slam, I'll be testing those features out and showing you exactly what you can expect. So be sure to check that out. Let's kick it off with my absolute favorite build. I don't even know what to call this thing. Let's just call it the stunning and prickly overpowered shouty boy. Well, this build is all about being super tanky and incredibly hard to kill. And when things hit you, they take a lot of damage. When you stun things, you do more damage. And then you're just banking up charges until you unleash a massive attack. Now, that massive attack will be based on overpower. Overpower is a new mechanic to Diablo 4. It does more damage like a crit based on how much HP you have and how much fortify you have. So... The base rate, I believe, is 3%, but we have a way of guaranteeing that overpower goes off. So, we don't want to lean too heavily into thorns, as it doesn't work for every situation. This build has three ways of taking advantage of a, of a super high life and fortified health to dish out pain between, between thorns and between overpower scaling and between having more damage at higher lives. So... The stats we want to look for are health, we want to look for crit, and more on that soon, as well as overpower damage. Now the pros are this will be nigh impossible to kill with, with high damage potential. It has great team support. This is probably one of the best supporting classes in the game, even though it doesn't actually need to be. And it has uh, very good heals. But the cons are it's got unreliable DPS output, it's easier to kite, and it's easy to ignore in PvP especially, there's no real ways for it to get in. Now let's start with the basic skills and go through the aspects and items then we'll finally pop it off with a Paragon board and you'll see how everything kind of works together. Starting with the basic skill, we want to grab Bash. Now it does a middling amount of damage for a basic skill, but the main thing is after bashing enemies four times, your next Bash will stun by 1.5 seconds or by two seconds if you're using a two-handed weapon and you'll see very soon that we will be using a two-handed mace or hammer. Then, getting enhanced bash, damaging a stunned enemy with bash will grant you 5% base life as fortify. You double this amount when using two-handed weapons, so that's one of the ways that you'll uh, utilize using two-handed weapons. So you'll get 10% base life as fortify. Keep in mind that fortified life actually reduces your damage, in the damage you take by 10%, just a flat 10%. So, Having as, as fortify instead of just as health is definitely a benefit. So every time you damage a stunned enemy, which would be, at, let's just say at least once if you get a stun off every four hits. So every four hits, you'll just be getting 10% base life as fortify. So it works very well with the build that we're going for, where we try to increase our health. Next, uh, after critically striking four times with a bash with a two-handed weapon, so we absolutely need the two-handed weapon, your next core skill or weapon mastery skill will overpower. Combat Bash is the cornerstone of this build. This will make it so we have a way to guarantee an overpower, so we will be needing to get Critically Strike uh, related items and we might need to put points into Dexterity just as a way to reliably uh, get Combat Bash up and we will also have other means with a passive over here as well. So the core skill that we will be using to overpower will be Upheaval. Now, you can go with Hammer of the Ancients. That is an option if you want a more single target focused overpower. But I believe Upheaval is the way. Just because it uh, does damage in an error, giving you a way to clear out 
a lot more mobs than just one. And it also does a high amount of damage uh, with upheaval enhanced. You do have a 20% chance to stun all enemies in front of you for 2.5 seconds. And a few parts of our build utilize stunning enemies. So it's always good to have that on a stick. But the most important thing is furious upheaval. It makes it so dealing direct damage to an enemy with, the, with a skill that's not upheaval, that includes your bash and leap if you choose to get it, uh, causes your next cast of upheaval to deal an increased amount of damage. And with just this as, it's, as itself, with no boost, it stacks up to 10 times, up to 80%. So upheaval just gets a flat 80% boost while you're bashing your enemies. And with this build, you will be focusing around just bashing and uh, boosting up your health with shouts that you won't be upheavaling very often. You'll be upheavaling when you get the procs and then unleashing a huge amount of burst damage, an absolutely ridiculous amount of burst damage. So... This just multiplies that ridiculous burst damage by an increase of 80%, which is why I prefer it to Hammer of the Ancients, but this definitely does have its part. Now, as we move on down to defensive, I just want to point out that with this build and with, with all the builds, I'm telling you what skills to get in what order, but I'm not telling you how many points to put into them. You can kind of pick them up as you see fit. So you might not choose to put five points into upheaval up front you might choose to for example get challenging shout as upgrades before you do so so the order in which you put points is up to you but i'm giving you an idea of what works well together now speaking of challenging shout that's the next skill we definitely want it's not because it has a 40 percent damage reduction for eight seconds while you've activated it that's nice and that increases as we put points but we don't need that damage reduction we're going to have so much health and so much fortify that the reason we use this is for something else it's for the enhanced challenging shout so while challenging shout is active you gain 20 percent bonus maximum life <laughs> that's insane that's not giving you 20 percent of your current life that's giving you 20 percent of your maximum life so if you were at 10 hp but have 100 hp you're just getting 20 hp more which is crazy so it, it boosts your maximum life, which then boosts the uh, upheaval overpower, which is crazy in itself, but it's going to get crazy, guys, so buckle up. Then we get ch uh, Strategic Challenging Shout. This is one way you'll scale with your health, because while Challenging Shout is active, you gain thorns equal to 50% of your maximum life. So you've got all these ways to boost your maximum life, and then you're doing thorns damage to those enemies based on a scaling part of your your kit so you'll be doing a lot of thorns damage with, with this alone so you might even just rush to this and just have a way of clearing out enemies that's not just attacking them. and then we've got the passives which i'll go through soon which also scales up thorns but first let's talk about rallying cry this is a another shout you don't need any point you don't need more than one point into it um it gives you movement speed which is great because 30% is, is, is nothing to scoff at. It also gives you resource generation, which is great as well. But it's not the reason we picked this up. We picked this up because we pick up all the shouts and we've got some passives over here that make them even better. But Rallying Cry functions as a way to make yourself unstoppable, which is a way to break CC. So if you get stunned or if you get frozen, you pop this and you pop right out and you can, you can run unstoppable while it's active. And it's active for six seconds and it's active for even more when we boost it up so then we've got strategic rallying cry which grants you a 10 percent base life as fortify just pressing a button so we just press challenging shout 20 percent we just press we press uh rallying cry another 10 percent we're just pressing one button and getting these massive boosts but while it's active you get an additional two percent life as fortify each time you deal damage or you take direct damage so direct means a non-dot based damage so we won't be dealing damage fast because we won't be boosting our attack speed at all but we will be taking a lot of damage because challenging shout taunts all enemies nearby to attack you so even if you're in a group you'll be rocking your strategic rallying cry and just continually healing up because this is base life is fortify and fortify can just continue to stack on top of the health you already have and if you're getting hit by trash mob which you're you're mitigating a lot of the damage from you know, from the fact that Barbarians get a flat 10% uh, damage reduction from all sources and get a 10%
from uh, Fortify, then you've got your armor and all the other resistances and everything. So you might not be taking that much damage, but you're still stacking on that Fortify every time you take direct damage, and that's just going to make your health go to absurd levels. And then you overpower for an absurd amount. And keep in mind, you're going to try to get your crit high, so you can crit overpower. They can stack together. So that is something that you can think about as well. So we've got the Rallying Cry and we've got Challenging Shout, so they work well together, but they'll work even better soon. And then for passives in this tree, we want to get Imposing Presence. You just get a flat 15% maximum life. <laughs> so combine all of these together and you're going to be a tanky boy just, just from this part of the tree. Okay? And then we've got Outburst. It just grants you a flat amount of thorns, which is not what we're here for. We're here for the 20 thorns for each 25 bonus maximum life you have. And that works with all of those. So you're going to have a crazy amount of thorns. And then when you get tough as nails, which is, in, which is increasing your thorns amount by 60% total, which is the total that you get from all the maximum life as well. Um, it's going to be a crazy amount of thorns. Now, you don't need to worry too much about when enemies hit you. They take 1% of your thorns as bleeding. That's only a little bit of an icing on the cake there. So this rounds out what we need to get for the thorns aspect of the build is, is it scales with your maximum life. The more maximum life you have, the more thorns damage you'll be doing so that's why we get maximum life and that's why overpower and thorns work so well together so we've got those but that's not all that's not all that combos together that's a lot of combos but then we have uh, war cry this gives us just uh, a bit of damage it gives us a bit of damage 15 percent for eight seconds and nearby allies for four seconds but that's not why we get it as well with enhanced war cry we get berserking berserking gives us 25 percent uh bonus damage and it also gives us 30 percent movement speed your memory serves it correctly so you get another way of moving a little faster for a short time but that's we don't need that this is not the build we've got a berserking build coming up what we need it for is the mighty war cry which grants you 28 percent base life as fortify so fortify is, is better than maximum health in a lot of ways not for the the thorns part but fortify gives you that 10 percent resistance and this is a lot of base life right you've got to have heaps of base life so you're going to have a lot of fortify, you're going to have a lot of maximum life, and, and just pressing those three, you just go, you know, you just hit Challenging Shower, you hit Rallying Cry, and, you, and then you hit War Cry, and you're going to have a crazy amount of tank. You're just going to be huge. And then, because you've got three shouts, you get Booming Voice. Your skill effect durations, shouting skill effect durations are increased by 30%. So War Cry now lasts roughly 11 seconds, depending on what rank it is. Uh, your challenging shout the same and your rallying cry a little bit less but this is pretty much 100% uptime because these have a 25 second cooldown and with some aspects that will go through it's going to be even less than that uh, and they last for quite a while so you can cycle through these making sure that you have at least one shout active and that comes into play because of raid leader your shouts also heal allies including yourself for 3% of the maximum life per second. And because your maximum life is scaled so high, that's going to be a lot of healing. So you can keep your whole team healed and yourself. And keeping yourself at that high life is great for overpower, obviously. And it's also, there's an overheal mechanics which you'll go through with aspects. But this can potentially stack. So if you've got three shouts, there's three, six, nine maximum life per second. I don't see at this point in the game how you could possibly die unless you're getting hit so hard that it goes through all of your life, which is not seeming very likely considering how this is built. So, continuing on to weapon mastery. We don't want any any skills here, we just want passives. We want just one point in Pit Fighter in order to get to No Mercy. The Pit Fighter just gives us a very small increase of damage to close enemies and 2% to distant uh, enemies uh, give you, sorry, 2% uh, damage reduction from distant enemies. We utilize all 58 of our points, so we can't really put points willy-nilly. Uh, but if you wanted to, while you're leveling, I would recommend getting Leap. Leap just lets you get into action and out of action quickly, but take that point out when you get to the late game because you've got other ways of getting in. You can just run really fast with your shouts. Okay, so No Mercy... You have a 9% increased critical strike chance against immobilized, stunned, and slowed enemies. Now, keep in mind, you will be stunning enemies a lot. 
uh, immobilization and slow might be effect uh, might come into play with your your friends, but you'll be getting a lot of stuns off. So if you, if they're stunned, you'll be critting more often. You're critting more often. You're getting your combat bash to proc. That's what you need. So increase of crit is great if you really want to guarantee that you're getting that higher crit rate. You can put one point into ground stomp, which stuns enemies for a long duration. Then you might be getting more of those procs. But it's better to get ground stomp with gear rather than putting a point into it then we have thick skin each time you take direct damage you gain 1.1 percent base life as fortify so another way of gaining fortify another way that's utilizing your base life another way that's utilizing challenging shout because if things are hitting you uh, you're not only healing from uh your rallying cry you're not only healing from raid leader you're now healing from a passive as well this thick skin passive and then we have counter offensive while you have fortify over 50 percent of your maximum life which you get with thick skin you get with mighty war cry you just deal 15 percent increased damage so things aren't killing you fast enough then you're just doing a ton more damage so counter offensive is is, is a great thing to have when you're so so tanky and then we move down to the ultimate tree we are going to be boring and not pick up an ultimate, but if you absolutely wanted to pick up one, I'd maybe say Wrath of the Berserker just because it grants you that an unstoppable, another unstoppable on stick. But what we really want in this tree is Wallop and some of the other passives here. Your skills using bludgeoning weapons deal 15% increased damage if the enemy stunned or vulnerable. So you'll just be doing 15% increased damage a lot of the time. Then we have Brute Force. Your overpower deals 45% increased damage when using two-handed weapons. So 45% increase. I think the maximum overpower boost you can get just from stats and gear, I think is 40, is uh, 200%. So you've still got 155% to find somewhere, but that's a big boost. That's a big boost on top of the crazy amount of health you're going to have, the crazy amount of fortify you're going to have. So those upheaval strikes are going to be hitting stupidly hard. Then we have concussion. This is based on a lucky hit. So you'll be looking at roughly 50%, I believe. Yep, 50% for bash and then 20% for upheaval. So you're looking at for bash, a 15% total chance to stun enemies for three seconds or up to a 45% chance, which is a 22.5% chance when using a two-handed bludgeoning weapon. So you'll have a flat 22.5% chance to stun enemies for three seconds. So you'll be stunning single target enemies a lot, a lot. And then there's a 20% chance to stun them with upheaval as well. So you'll be getting all of those boosts that work together with stunning enemies and concussion will just be icing on the cake. And finally, we've got the key passive, Unbridled Rage. Your core skills deal 135% increased damage, but cost 100% more Fury. Now you can see already how this works really well. 135% increased damage is stupidly high, right? You don't see that on anything. But 100% more Fury, that's a bit of a, a, a drawback, right? It means you can't use upheaval that often. But it's not, because that's an 80 Fury cost, and with a Paragon Point, which we'll go through soon, you'll want it to be quite expensive. But you'll also be casting Bash a lot more than you will be upheavaling. So the idea is you'll you'll run into the fight with your, with your shouts on, you'll have a stupid amount of HP, you'll be bashing, you'll be de dealing more damage to stun targets. And then once you've built up the charges that you get the guaranteed overpower, you launch off your upheaval. You'll have more than enough fury at that point, but you're not going to cast another upheaval straight away. You're just going to start bashing again, so you get that guaranteed huge burst of damage. You'll be getting, you know, your uh, Fortify built up. You'll be re reshuffling your shouts, and then you'll be up upheavaling again. So that's how long it will take. But yeah, so that's upheaval will be boosted by a crazy amount more damage. Like we're, we're talking more than double, and you're getting a, a stupid amount of HP from other sources. So your overpower will be multiplicative. It's just going to stack up to a crazy amount of burst. So those are all the skills. How does it come together with items and aspects? Well, I've got a few here I want to show you just so you get an example of what you can expect. 
Let's start with Starlight Aspect. You can just gain some of your primary resource, so some of your fury, for every 20% of life you heal. And you're healing a lot. You've got your shouts up all the time. You're always healing. This, this build is always healthy. So you're just going to be generating more and more fury, and therefore you'll be able to unleash your people with, without ever really worrying because it's, it is a high fury cost, but you're going to be generating so much of it. Now, I wanted to highlight Razor, pl uh, Razor Plate, which is a unique chest item. You gain a lot of thorns. It's got a lot of thorns on it. We can't be sure exactly how much because this is it will probably go up with, with item score or it'll be a set amount that's just a, a huge amount that hasn't been locked in just yet. But this is another way just to supplement that thorns build. And then when you get Needle Flare Aspect, your thorns damage dealt has a chance to deal damage all, of, uh, all around you. So basically, let's say you have 10 enemies. If one, en one of those 10 hits you and this procs, all 10 of those enemies are going to take the thorns damage that you have. And that's boosted by, you know, outbursts and tough as nails and all of that. But let's just say it procs for all 10, 100 instances of damage, which is insane, in absolutely insane. So Needle Flare really works at clearing out mobs, uh, especially well with Challenging Shout. And then we have potentially the most broken unique pants I've ever seen. The most broken item I've probably ever seen functioning with a build. Effects that heal you beyond 100% life grant you a barrier up to 50 to 100% of your maximum life that lasts 30 seconds and this doesn't seem like it has a cooldown. Usually uniques and, and item effects like this don't have cooldowns, they have some chance to it. This isn't a chance. This is a if you heal beyond 100% life, which you're going to do with all of these effects, you get a barrier up to 100% of your maximum life and your maximum life is astronomically large for 30 seconds and this just keeps going this keeps keeps stacking i can't imagine this wouldn't be nerfed or changed in some way because i don't think there's a way for you to die if you have these pants you don't need to even hit enemies to gain life you just press a button with a shout and you gain life and then you double your life because 100 percent of your life is a barrier and then it's going to regenerate again when you heal again when you lose a bit of life and heal again it just regenerates again I do not see how you could possibly die with this build if you had these sets, this set of pants. I don't want to say this because I want to keep this build all to myself, but this seems like it's going to be the ultimate PvP build. I don't see how any character could potentially kill you unless you're you're ganged up on and the, the odds are against you. Even then, I don't know. Because you can just keep stunning, you can keep dishing out incredibly high burst damage to one-shot people. And then when they do try to kill you, they'll be hurting themselves. This is insane. Then we have uh, Hellhammer. Uh, you don't necessarily think, I don't think you need this, but since you're using upheaval, you just do a little bit of extra damage over time in the area that you upheavaled, but you're not going to be using it that often, so it might not be that good. Then we have Edgemaster's Aspect. Skills deal up to 34% increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast, receiving the maximum benefit while you have full primary resource. So yet again, we'll be casting Bash a lot. We'll be generating a lot of primary resource. We've got another way to do it here. And you'll be casting up people uh, very infrequently. So you'll have a 34% increase damage when you cast upheaval. And that is another multiplier that's insane. I don't think it, I can really hammer home just how much of a multiplication this all is. It's all like 134%, uh, 34%, 20, 20, 20, 20. Is this, is this going to multiply to stupid levels? And then we have Aspect of Retribution, and this is what brings the stunning part together. Distant enemies have a 15% chance to be stunned for two seconds when they hit you. So this is just, on top of your thorns, a very difficult way for ranged enemies to get to you or to, to reliably do damage to you. But the, the best thing about this aspect is you deal 50% increased damage to stunned enemies. So that com that combines with, that combines here with the, yep, your concussion and that uh, combines with wallop. And that makes it so, you might even consider putting a point into Grand Stomp, take a point out of a passive somewhere, put it in there, have that guaranteed stun and you're going to be doing a lot of increased damage. So you might choose to 
ground stomp and then upheaval with all your upheaval stacks ready to go and that's just 50 percent increased damage on top of that as well so i foresee this build hitting on a similar scale of 10 damage 10 damage 10 damage 10 damage 1 million damage 10 damage 10 it would be like that it would just be an insane amount of damage all right then we've got bold chieftain's aspect whenever you cast a shout skill its cooldown is reduced by a set amount per nearby enemies up to a maximum of 12. now if you look at rallying cry is a 25 second cooldown that puts it down to a 13 second cooldown same with these 13 13 so if they're 13 seconds and they're up for more than 10 each yeah you can see where i'm going with this you're always going to be shouting you're going to be a shouty boy and then your shout skills generate fury while active this probably stacks so if you have three you're four eight twelve fury generating per second that is more than you're getting from bash so you're going to get to the amount you need for our people very quickly and you're going to get to the amount where edge master's aspect is applying the full boost very very quickly you might get to the point you don't need to bash as much you might you might be able to upheaval a lot more but these all work very well together with this build you can see how it just kind of comes together and then when we go in to the paragon board when you do hit level 50 you'll be going through the basic paragon board first with this build you want to focus on willpower and dexterity dexterity for your crit chance so barbarians get crit chance uh, per point of dexterity and willpower for your overpower damage now you might want to get crit to a particular a level where it's reliable before you go for willpower but then willpower you want to map you want to focus on after that and then strength being third and intelligence being last you really don't need the resistance per point because you will be getting armor which applies some resistance to your character you want to go for bone breaker and you want to go for warbreaker so bone breaker is one that focuses around two-handed maces overpowering uh it's got increases to life you can see all here in the magic nodes life 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 the rare node is life and armor we have damage increase with two-handed bludgeoning weapons overpower damage this is the this is the node or this is the board that is going to give you the most bang for your buck this is where you want to go see there's big dexterity magic node here as well the legendary node gives your overpowers with your two-handed bludgeoning weapon uh, ability to stun enemies for a set amount of time and grants you the percentage of maximum life is fortified that just caps off off the build it's just perfect you, you're looking for stuns and you're looking for max life that's exactly what you need so just this makes the build even better that's there's nothing more to say uh we don't know exactly how many seconds and how much maximum life is there going to be changing that come release but this is something you definitely want to go for and cap it off with with all of all of these extra magic and rare nodes i'll leave this to you guys to find out what the perfect combination is but i highly recommend since the glyph socket is so far from this legendary node that you put it next to another glyph socket like the one over here just so the radius will hit it now we can't be sure how big these glyph uh, radiuses are going to get you're going to have to invest quite a lot to get it that far so um play around with the boards see what you can do but definitely boosting this will be great for you for those who don't know glyphs are like runes or gems that you put into your paragon board and as you upgrade them by doing certain tasks late game they'll have a radius that upgrades the nodes around them so the next board we want to get is warbringer for every 75 fury you spend you gain 20 percent of your maximum life is fortified every time you upheaval you spend 80 fury so you're just going to be getting another 20 percent maximum life which works so well with your other skills yes it won't work with your your upheaval overpower because you basically spend it after the attack applies so you'll get the 20 percent maximum life after the damage has gone through so after you've already cast the skill so you're not going to get that boost straight away but this is maximum life is fortified and fortified stays there so the next upheaval you do that gets boosted by the overpower will have that 20 percent so you're just constantly gaining more and more and more fortify to the point where you're just going to be absolutely insanely big um, to a, up to a cap but you're going to be insanely big and this is just another way of just making you bigger now the nodes give you physical damage they give you strength they give you maximum fury which you want to get to maybe 
160 maximum so you can do two upheavals in a row if you need to uh and then fortify generation as well so this is just a good uh this is just a good place to be after perhaps you you go for the bone breaker legendary so those all work well together that's the two boards i think you should focus on and that's the build it's the the stunning and prickly overpowered shouty boy you know you you get in there with your shouts make you a lot they make you a lot faster especially war cry will give you the 30 percent movement speed uh rallying cry gives you another 30 on top of that i'm not sure if it stacks additively but it stacks so you'll be moving stupidly fast you're talking like one second half a second to get to the edge of the screen with 60 percent uh you get in there you'll start bashing you'll be getting bash crits very often and then you'll be overpowering with your upheaval to do massive amounts of damage because with all of your shouts you're getting this crazy amount of bonus maximum life you're also healing the same time you're also forcing enemies to attack you which boosts your life up even more you're bashing enemies with your two-handed weapon based on your passives even more you're doing this whole thing works together so well as like an ecosystem of 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 mechanics that just feed off of each other so this build seems like it's going to be a lot of fun the only problem will be that leveling up without the right skills and without the right items it'll feel weak to begin with it will feel weak you know you won't be hitting things very hard your dps is inconsistent you'll be relying almost completely on an overpower upheaval and uh, your challenging shout to do the thorns damage so that is that is everything to do with this build let's move on to the next so the last build was about being tanky and hitting incredibly hard very slowly this build is about constant damage it's damage over time with bleed effects and the vulnerability status so what do i even call this is it the always bleeding and vulnerable like my ex-wife build yeah let's call it the ex-wife build so this build is about focusing on dealing massive damage like i told you utilizing stacking bleeds and vulnerable effects this build has a large range of reliable ways to do this and one of the most consistent damage dealing builds i can i can see with a high amount of burst for pvp if you need it it doesn't rely on on small chances for big numbers or or, or time berserking effects instead it gives you the freedom to apply dots and vulnerability which helps your team as well as freeing you up to move around and avoid hazards so the pros are this build can stay mobile as it doesn't need to stick on enemies it it deals high damage it has a predictable and reliable output with the option for a high amount of burst damage now its cons are it's predictable especially in a pvp setting it, there's not a huge amount of survivability and no reliable movement abilities so this is probably the the most squishy out of the out of the three builds so the stats you're looking for is is vulnerability damage you're looking for crit chance and i need to explain that later and and crit damage which i also need to explain later let's start with the basic skill we start with flay you flay the enemy dealing a very small amount of damage up front but a very large amount of bleeding damage over five seconds you then want to pick up enhanced flay Flay has a 10% chance to make the enemy vulnerable for two seconds, doubling this chance when using a two-handed weapon. So, two things. We're going to be using a two-handed sword primarily. And number two, we are going to be stacking vulnerable effect. Now, the vulnerable effect starts off, I believe, as a 10% boost to all damage output, including from your friends. But individual characters have their own extra damage boost to that. So you might find an item that says increase the damage you deal to vulnerable targets by 10%. Therefore, you now deal 20% damage to vulnerable targets. So that effect is quite common. So you will be looking for that effect and you'll be keeping enemies permanently vulnerable. This is one of the ways you can do it, but this isn't the primary way. When Flay deals direct damage to an enemy, they take 10% increased bleeding damage from you for the next three seconds. And that's really good because of your core skill Ren. Now this is what you want to be casting more often. Flay, you just want to be getting in, flaying as many individual enemies as you can, making sure that bleeding is going and doing its thing. You don't need to keep recasting it. And then you want to rend them all. And this deals a small amount of upfront damage, but it deals a huge amount of bleeding damage over five seconds. With enhanced rend, 
dealing direct damage with rend extends the duration of vulnerable on enemies by 2 seconds. So keep that in mind with the various vulnerable applying skills we, we have, for example, like using Enhanced Flay. Then we have Ren deals 12% increased damage to vulnerable enemies, so Ren will now be doing 22% extra damage to vulnerable enemies. The way vulnerable works with bleed is, bleed doesn't crit it, um, yet, <laughs> but bleed does extra damage to vulnerability. When you look at the enemy's bar, when their bar goes blue, they're vulnerable. And you can see a faded health bar over their health bar, which represents how much damage they're going to take over time by the bleed. The bleed will be more while they're vulnerable, and then once vulnerability wears off, it'll cut back down to show you the, the real projected amount of damage. So, Rend will do an increased amount of damage to vulnerable enemies, but keep in mind that the projected amount of damage you're about to do will change based on if the vulnerability status is still applied. Okay, then we want to get Pressure Point. So it's a lucky hit chance. Your core skills have up to a 30% chance to make enemies vulnerable for 2 seconds. So that is a 33% chance and a 30% chance of that. So we're looking at roughly 11% chance of just putting a vulnerable effect on when you rent. And that's just another way to get them vulnerable. So you've got this and you've got this. Um, so a lot of enemies, because you'll be applying this a lot, a lot of enemies will be getting that vulnerable effect. And it lasts two seconds, but you can keep that going with the Rend effect because you, you deal direct damage with Rend. You deal direct damage with Flay. It's a small amount, but you still deal it. So you'll be doing a lot of extra bleed damage with your vulnerability effect. And you'll start seeing that effect really take shape when you start getting items, you start getting your aspects, and you start getting your Paragon points. So go through that soon, but keep in mind, it starts off slow, but it ends strong. We don't want any defense because we're a barbarian. We don't need defense. Defense is for the other... All right, we move on over to brawling. Yet again, we don't need to brawl. We're all about just slicing them open and walking away. So move on down. Now, the, the, the order in which you get those skills up to you, whichever you think is more effective, but we need enough points investment to get to weapon mastery. Now, with weapon mastery, we want to get rupture. This is the skill that lets us burst damage. You skewer enemies in front of you, not just one, you skewer the enemies in front of you. Dealing 13% damage, not so much, but it still counts as a direct damage skill, just for your note. Then rip your weapon out, dealing damage to enemies for their total bleeding amount and removing all bleeding damage from them. So remember when I said you get the projected amount of bleed damage? Well, whatever that projected amount is, you're just going to do that straight away. So if the projected amount kills the enemy, casting Rupture will just kill them. So that's why vulnerability is great, because it might be a vulnerability for two seconds, but the bleed lasts for 5, so you only get 2 seconds of bleed vulnerability extra bonus damage. But with Rupture, it just takes it all at once, and you just get that vulnerability effect for the whole bleeding amount, which is insane. Also, this doesn't take Fury. It's got a cooldown of 10 seconds, it's got 2 charges, and it's got a lucky hit chance of 50%. So it's a very good skill, and it's good to finish off enemies, at least at the start, until we get a particular unique effect which makes it so Rupture will be cast at the start, but we'll talk about that later. And then we have Enhanced Rupture. Ripping your weapon out of enemies during Rupture causes an explosion that deals 30% bleeding damage over 5 seconds. It's not a huge amount, but it's extra bleed in an AoE, so it's good to have. And then we have Fighter's Rupture. Hitting at least one enemy with Rupture heals you for 15% of your maximum life. You have two charges, and you have 30% of you get a little overwhelmed. You don't need the attack speed because you'll be hitting things, walking back, dodging, setting your bleed across enemies, you don't need to keep attacking. So, but attack speed is very uncommon in this game. Finding attack speed on anything is very rare. Getting attack speed in talents is very rare. So this is a very rare effect that you might want to invest in if you had a particular reason for it, but I much prefer the heal. Now the main passives we will be focusing on are hamstring. Your bleeding effects slow enemies by 30% and that matters soon when i show you the no mercy passive which we went through before and cut to the bone your bleeding effects deal 18 percent increased damage to vulnerable enemies so that stacks with all the other increases to vulnerable enemies making it 18 plus 18 plus 12 so 30 percent increase to vulnerable 
enemies plus the 10 so 40 percent increase for your rup for your uh ren skill which is a huge amount of bonus damage so it's always good to get cut to the bone considering you're going to be spreading that vulnerable effect around we also get pit fighter this is the only uh pit fighter we get for every build but this is the only one where we need to put three points in just because we have the extra points we've got 18 extra to spend in this build so if you really wanted to like i've mentioned before you can get leap leap is always good to get in the fights get out of fights you can also get uh ground stomp which is stun enemies give you a little bit of breathing room you got extra points to spend the main thing is getting no mercy uh everything is going to be cc'd around you you've got your bleeding effects just flat slow enemies everyone's going to be bleeding everyone's going to be slow by 30 percent that's a lot you're going to be able to stick on enemies really easily and then you're going to be able to crit them much more often and critting matters because of the capstone so keep no mercy in mind when i get to the end of the skill tree because it matters dealing direct damage with weapon mastery skills causes your next core skill to make enemies vulnerable for three seconds and now we have a way to permanently keep invulnerability up because of not invulnerability vulnerability we have a way to keep that up permanently because rupture has two charges 10 second cooldown this keeps them vulnerable for three seconds you cast one rupture that's three seconds of vulnerability you cast another that is another three seconds of vulnerability so that's six seconds out of the the uh 10 second cooldown correct but over that time you've cooled down three seconds already so does that make sense like it's it's you're going you're going to be able to rotate this through uh your wrens and through your flays and you're always going to be able to put a vulnerability status on a single enemy on multiple enemies is a different story but if you're focusing on a single group of enemies they'll always be vulnerable with uh cycling through these abilities all right moving on we don't need to put anything into ultimate now you've always got the option to do that and if you want to keep the bleed theme going iron maelstrom uh gives you 120 percent bleed over five seconds which is a lot so it might be something to consider you have the points to play with go for it with all these extra points you can put more into passives you can play around with your health but what we need to get to is the capstone the key passive gushing wounds remember how i said bleeding doesn't crit well now it does when causing an enemy to bleed you have a chance equal to your critical strike chance to increase the bleed amount by 100 percent of your critical strike da damage bonus so that means the remember when i told you to get crit chance and get crit damage that is so your bleed effects crit and do extra damage based on that crit uh, amount so you're going to be doing an insane amount of bleed damage just with this passive alone because it opens doors for the stats to matter more so until this point crit doesn't matter but suddenly it's one of the best things you can get for the build because not only can you boost your damage by boosting the amount of damage that vulnerable enemies take which you find very commonly on gear now crit and crit damage is, is a stat that you ma that matters and it increases if that increases your damage so you've got three avenues to to look for in terms of stats when it comes to upping your damage you mount all right so those are the skills that you need to look out for and then we have some aspects and and one uh unique weapon that i think you should look out for aspect of anemia lucky hit direct damage against bleeding enemies has a up to 40 percent chance to stun for two seconds and you will be hitting bleeding enemies a lot because you'll be always making them bleed so you're just going to have a very high chance of stunning enemies just all the time uh, as long as you deal direct damage to them and like i mentioned uh even even rupture is direct damage so all of your actual attacks do direct damage it's just they also do damage over time then we have gain up to four percent damage reduction 20 percent maximum when you're near a bleeding enemy so everyone's going to be bleeding you're pretty much always going to have a 20 percent maximum uh amount of damage reduction unless you're against a single boss and then it'll be what like four percent which is still pretty good so just a way to mitigate damage and it's something we don't have in the build so it's something to keep an eye out for so skull breakers aspect stunning a bleeding enemy 
deals up to 40% of their total bleeding amount to them as physical damage. So that stacks very well with Aspect of Anemia. So these two work together perfectly. And that's quite a lot of total bleeding amount. Uh, so bleed does do a physical damage. Uh, so if you find anything that is increased to physical damage, it will also increase, increase your bleed effect. Uh, so that's just something to note. And then we have a uh, slacking aspect. So another lucky hit. You have chance up to 50% to gain 20 fury when Ren deals direct damage to at least one bleeding enemy. So you'll be doing this quite a lot. So Ren has a 33% lucky hit chance and 50% of that is roughly, what, 16 something, 17% chance to gain 20 fury. So it will cost you 15 fury essentially to cast rend every so often it's just a good way of keeping your fury up nice and high and keep spamming that rend then we have the unique two-handed sword filled fields of crimson now this is the one that essentially turns your rend uh, turns your uh, uh rupture into an ability you might want to cast at the start because while using this weapon damaging at least one enemy with rupture creates a blood pool that inflicts a bit of bleeding damage over six seconds but enemies standing in that pool take a 10 percent increased bleeding damage amount so that obviously stacks with battle flay that applies to all of your effects because they're all about bleeding and because they're taking extra bleeding damage if you do do if you do do another rupture uh you get that 10 percent damage boost because they're projected to take 10 percent more bleeding damage this is the a perfect kind of finishing item for this build as it's also a, a, a two-handed sword which is what you're going to be using to do ma the majority of your damage with this build then we move over to the paragon board so you're going to start with the basic board with this build you probably want to be going for strength and dexterity dexterity uh, is your primary stat because you really want to be getting that crit chance once the crit chance is to a certain level where you can reliably crit, you want to put points into strength. So let's go back and let's have a look at the first Paragon board. We want Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is a perfect way to increase the amount of bleed damage you do. Enemies that have been affected by your bleeding for three or more seconds take 15% increased damage from you. That's from all sources. So 15% more bleed damage, 15% more upfront damage, just 15% more damage. Which is brilliant because everybody is going to be bleeding. You're going to make everybody bleed. It's going to be a town of uh, ex-wives everywhere, all right? Uh, by the way, that joke isn't dark. It's just saying that she's on her period all the time. All right. Physical damage over time is boosted, which applies to your bleed. Uh, damage reduction from enemies that are bleeding. More strength. You've got uh, extra damage reduction. You've got physical damage over time. Even the, the magic nodes boost that up. So this is just a really good tree for that. Then we move over to the Decimator uh, nodes, which is the legendary lucky hit two-hand slashing weapons. Have a chance, a 10% chance to make enemies vulnerable for two seconds. And this is just another way to make sure that you keep putting vulnerability on things because this is a lucky hit chance uh, and 10%. So your, your flay has a 5% chance roughly all the time to make enemies vulnerable. It's a lot less for your uh, rend because it's only a 33% lucky hit chance. So it's 10% of that. Uh, so rend not so much, but play is going to have a lot more chance of, of uh, applying vulnerable. And you just want to keep applying that vulnerable effect because it's just going to keep boosting your damage by stupid amounts. Uh, then we have more vulnerable damage, flat vulnerable damage. We have uh, more life, we have more vulnerable damage, and more physical damage, and this is just another another great addition to your your whole your whole play style. And this is another build that doesn't seem so flash, but once you get everything that comes together and how much damage gets multiplied, it really starts to add up and it really starts to give you these huge numbers. And then we have blood rage. Now this one doesn't fit as cleanly as the others you kill a bleeding enemy and it's a 12 percent chance to grant a berserk for five seconds so it just makes you faster it makes you hit harder for five seconds which is great and a lot of these 
give you just random effects like damage while berserking. So just increasing your damage and you'll be berserking a lot because everything's going to be bleeding, everything's going to be dying. So you're just going to be increasing that, uh, that berserk amount. So you, you'll pretty much just be multiplying your damage. Here's, here's extra damage to bleeding enemies as well, extra damage to elites. Elites are also bosses and pe people in PvP, so that has been shown to count. So all of this works really well together. So the bleeding build, the ex-wife build, is something that doesn't seem so flashy, but you get all these extra points to spend to make it work, make it come together. You'll be running to combat very fast because you will be fast with your shout. Uh, you'll be applying your flay. You'll be making enemies vulnerable. You'll be spreading the rend out. Everything around you will be bleeding. You'll be getting all these bonuses from everything bleeding. You will be casting Rupture every now and then just to burst things down, especially good in PvP. It'll be a huge hit at once. Uh, you'll be slowing enemies. You'll be doing an insane amount of crit bleeds as well. This is just a lot of damage over time that ends up making it so you do a lot of DPS. This would be a great boss killer. So that's the bleeding build. Let's move on to the, the lucky last. So do you want to go fast? Do you want to hit hard? Well, this is the build for you. What do we call this build? I'm going to say <sighs> the dual wielding shotgun sonic build because this is just about going fast and hitting really hard up close. This is the fantasy of playing a berserker, playing Kratos. You have full permission to, to jump in and scream like Kratos every time you play this character. You know, it's it, it cuts the gimmicks out to an extent. It focuses purely on dishing out as much damage as it can, as quickly as it can. We end up being permanently berserked. It, it, it has amazing melee strikes to burn fury which further increases its damage bonuses exponentially increasing its output basically you'll be embracing that berserker playstyle but the problem with this is is that you won't see the power come out very early i believe this is the build that uh Riker was shown a very similar build that Riker was shown uh when he went to chat to the devs this is a build that will require items out of every single character in the game and every single build in the game this seems to be as a generalization the most gear dependent because everything in its kit here multiplies damage so if the base is very low the multiplica multiplication won't be very high inversely if the base is high the multiplication will become huge so this is what you play if you want to chase that gear fantasy and if you want to be a pure melee barbarian it's got a lot of pros it's extremely high dps it's a great boss and player killer it's got many movement skills and it's basically impossible to lock down it's got so many cc breaks uh the cons are it's really tough early game you might want to just respec when you get the right gear uh it has no reliable aoe it's quite squishy and it's like i mentioned gear dependent let's start off so you get an idea of what i'm talking about so we start with frenzy now frenzy is the highest damaging basic skill only because it boosts the attack speed and like i mentioned before attack speed is extremely rare in this game so it unleashes a, a, a rapid flurry of blows dealing 28 damage with each pair of hits so you hit with both one-handed weapons so this build is focused on using two one-handed weapons whereas the previous was one two-handed sword and the one before that was one handed uh, a two-handed uh bludgeoning weapon so this utilizes the two one-handers and it gets up to a 60 percent attack speed boost it starts off just normal attack speed the next hits 20 next hits uh 40 and the next hit is 60 percent so with enhanced frenzy while you're getting that 60% bonus attack speed, so you've got the three stacks, you generate an additional two fury. You're already generating four fury very, very quickly because it's you're hitting very, very fast. Uh, but now you're generating six. So you generate fury incredibly quickly with this build and it'll get even quicker soon. And then while berserking, other skills have 5% uh, attack speed for each stack of frenzy you have. So that goes up to 15. 
I'm not sure right now we can increase the stacks of Frenzy. Maybe this is an item that we haven't seen yet that does so. But let's just say this 15% increase attack speed. And that is a lot. Because as you'll see in this build, the damage multiplications get to crazy levels. So if the damage multiplication is going up, anything that increases the attack speed is going to just boost that almost like a flat amount. So we move over to the core skills. The core skills you want to get is, is double swing or whirlwind. Now I'm sticking with double swing this build and I'm going to run through everything to do with double swing in this one. But if you were to go whirlwind, just keep in mind that you want to focus more on building fury than you want to uh, build up attack speed like I'm, I'm going to go through now. So whirlwind will be just more about burning through your fury uh, once you've built it up. I personally prefer Double Swing. Now, Double Swing, if you played the beta, if you played any of the early access stuff, or you're playing now, if you're watching this in the future, you'll notice that it comes out fairly slow. And because enemies move around, it's hard to get both hits. But with attack speed, this hits very fast, and you will get both of your weapons hitting for 50.4% damage with a level 5 Double Swing. So that's 100.8% weapon damage when they're caught by both. Then we have Enhanced Double Swing, so if it swings into a stunned or knocked down enemy, you gain 15 Fury. That won't really play into effect in this build, but we need to get Enhanced in order to get Furious Double Swing, which makes it so casting Double Swing while Berserking grants two additional seconds of Berserking. So keep that in mind, because we are going to be Berserking all the time, and this is just going to keep it up. We're just going to keep that Berserking going. So for those that I need to remind, while you're Berserking, you're, you have a base 30% movement speed increase and a base 25% extra damage. So you'll be doing a lot more damage and you'll be sticking on enemies a lot better or just getting to them a lot faster. So we move on down to defense, which we don't get because we are Kratos. We do not need defense. What we do need though is to scream like a madman because with Warcry, You'll be increasing your damage dealt. This is the wrong tool tip. It's more than this. It's more than 15% for 8 seconds. And you'll be giving it to allies as well. With Enhanced Warcry, you just get Berserking for 4 seconds. So you press the button. Let's just say it's on Q or it's on X. Uh, you press Q, you press X. And you let off the cry. Everything around you staggers. And you get that increased damage. And now you're Berserking as well. So this is a multiplication on top of the Berserking multiplication. You're just doing a ton of damage. With just one skill and then with power war cry if at least six enemies are nearby you get double that damage amount uh i'm not sure how much that's going to be because i can't remember off the top of my head i think with each rank you get like 3.5 percent increase uh damage dealt it doesn't show it with this tool tip but it starts off at 15 percent so it's a lot of damage war cry is going to give you a lot and it's going to be a way to keep berserking up with leap you'll also have another way of keeping berserker up a berserking up i'll show you how soon but leap is just a great skill it lets you get into combat really fast it lets you get out of bad situations and you're going to need that because you're mostly single target so it knocks back enemies and it deals a bit of damage then we have enhanced leap it just makes it so the cooldowns reduced if you don't hit anything so it's a good traversal tool but mighty leap slows enemies by 50 percent for five seconds and I'm just going to skip to this because we've gone through it with every other build. It works with No Mercy. And that's the reason we put one point into Pit Fighter and three points into No Mercy is because Leap's going to slow everyone. And because they're slowed, you're just going to do 9% uh, a higher a critical strike rate, which is, is insane. It's insane because it's always going to be up. Then we have the passives. So for, I'll go through Swiftness first. This is one that you don't necessarily need, but we have all these extra points. We're going to have three extra points at the end of this build to, to spend as well, so keep that in mind. Uh, your movement speed is increased by 12%. That's a lot. And with the movement speed bonuses that we get from everything else, this all adds on top of each other to make you move around very quickly. All of your friends are going to be lagging behind you, and that's going to be okay because I'm sure there's some necromancers, and I'm sure there's some ranged rogues, and I'm sure there's some sorceresses that would love to just kill everything before you get there. So this is going to make sure that you get there first, and you get to kill things so they can get stuck. Then we have Aggressive Resistance. This isn't needed except to get to the next few passes, but we might as well put points into it because there's a 12% damage reduction while Berserking, and we're always Berserking, so we might as well have some damage mitigation. Then we have Battle Fever. Oh, Fervor, sorry. 
when the brawling skill does damage you, you only got one brawling skill that you're going to be using to do damage leap. Uh, you gain berserking for three seconds. So what's going to happen is you're going to leap in, you're going to get three seconds of berserking, and you're going to war cry, and that's going to multiply uh, the amount of damage you do. It's going to give you more berserking, and then you're going to start hitting them, and you're going to get really, really, really fast. And when you get enough fury, you're going to unleash enough double swings to to start really killing things and keeping your berserk going and when we get the ultimate unleashing all of your fury at once will multiply your damage even more we'll talk about that soon all right then we got prophilic fury pro why did i say prophilic i'm just look i'm gonna be honest with you guys this is the second time i've recorded this the first time i recorded it i, I recorded it through two sound channels and it just there was no fixing the audio so i just had to redo it so i'm exhausted and i'm making mistakes but, oh well, you like seeing it, so let's do it. Like seeing the mistakes, that is, not me. No one wants to see that. While Berserking Fury Generation is increased by 18%. Simple. You just make more fury, you can do your double swings more often. Alright, I already went through Pit Fighter, No Mercy. But what we want here is either Death Blow or Steel Grasp. You need to make this decision. I'm not going to make it for you. I personally chose Death Blow because it has the ability to reset its cooldown which comes into play soon but steel grasp has a way to get you to start berserking as well if you damage an enemy you gain berserking for two seconds steel grasp pulls those enemies towards you that's very valuable if you want to keep attacking enemies that keep running from you so steel grasp has its uses however i want to go for death blow because death blow does a huge amount of damage so once you have all of those damage multiplications in place you unleash a death blow and you'll just blow something up it has a 15 second cooldown it has two charges that's a 50 percent lucky hit chance and if you kill an enemy its cooldown is reset think about that while i go through your increased damage to bosses another huge damage that's a huge amount guys that's insane considering all the boosts that you get death blow is going to be crazy for taking down bosses but it's the warrior's death blow that i'm concerned about if death blow damages at least one enemy gain berserk for three seconds so now with this and everything else we keep berserking up forever because what you can do with death blow is you can kill a trash enemy in one hit and get berserking for three seconds and now you still have two charges of death blow and then when berserking drops you use a death blow then if that drops you leap in on someone you got some more berserking then if that ever drops you war cry it's fully recharged now death blow can go again and then you might kill something you might have this up it's, it's, it's you'll always be berserk that's basically how it's going to be and with the ultimate that just solidifies all right so you're always going to be berserking with death blow if you find that you have no trouble keeping berserking up maybe you want to get steel cross. but Let's move on to the ultimate. Now, the ultimate isn't necessary, but it is good. We, it's the first time I've actually said it's part of the build as well. So might as well have a look why. You gain berserking and unstoppable for five seconds. So this is one way of breaking CCs. Uh, so for those who don't know, when you're unstoppable, even if you're frozen, even if you're stunned, uh, it breaks it and you can't be slowed, stunned or crowd controlled at all for five seconds. And then for the next 10 seconds, dealing direct damage with basic skills grants berserking for 5 seconds. So you can basically activate this, start hitting enemies, and you're just going to keep that berserking going without having to use any of your other skills. Which is good, but you, you can keep that berserk going with other things. The main reason you want this is for its upgrades. While Wrath of the Berserker is active, you gain 20% movement speed and increase fury generation for 30%. It's the movement speed, guys. So you've got 30% to start with. Now you have 50% with Wrath of the Berserker. And then you have you have 62% uh, <laughs> with Swiftness. It's just... Look. In an ARPG, bonuses to movement speed is quite more noticeable than it is in other games. Mainly because the, the time you take to traverse the screen is a lot shorter than the time it takes to... It, it, when you're over someone's shoulder it just doesn't look as fast it looks 60 uh, percent is basically going like half less than half a second from one side of the screen to the other you're going up a lot faster so you'll be able to close the distance very quickly in pvp 
they will not be able to stop you you'll be able to um literally be unstoppable when you activate it uh and you'll be able to stick and do the damage so double swing is hard to land and keep consistent will just be stupidly easy to keep consistent and then if you consider that supreme wrath of the berserker for every 50 fury you spend so two double swings uh you'll increase your berserk damage by 25 percent the bonus by 25 percent while wrath of berserker is active you want to dump all of your fury you want to you want to you want to double swing four times the third and fourth time because it's 25 fury so it costs 50 fury so two of these uh will have a, a stupid amount of uh increased damage and then there's other ways that you can you can burn it even faster like you could you could get unbridled rage if you really want to burn it faster but the better way is just to increase your maximum fury and just dump everything you have this stupid amount of damage multiplication and when it gets that high then you just dump a death blow and that's just like bam like 200 300 400 plus percent extra damage and then if you crit it's a multiplication of that and it just stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and if you've got a, a weapon with one base damage yeah it might only be 100 damage but if you if you've got a big powerful weapon it's going to multiply it so much that this really comes together and it comes together uh, without the need to get the key passive but it, the key passive helps Increase Berserk's maximum duration by 5 seconds. So now you can stack even more. And increases damage bonus by 25%. So just from the onset, you will always have 50% bonus damage because you'll always be Berserking. So that is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So this is a very, very potent build. It's not very flashy, but once you get the items, it's incredibly potent. Now, there's a lot of things that can make it even better. And all these aspects that you can get from dungeons can make it better. We've got Aspect of Giant Strides. Reduces the cooldown of Leap by up to 5 seconds per enemy hit. Up to a maximum of 9 seconds. Okay. So, Leap, if I need to remind you, because of Battle Fervor. I said Fervor that time, thank God, not Fever. Because of Battle Fervor, uh, will give you a guaranteed Berserking. So having that up more often is really good. Because you can just keep leaping through combat. To, to the people to stick on them you're gonna leap out of combat you're gonna be into it it's just it's just gonna be great for the build then we have a lucky hit chance uh up to 35 percent chance on top of that to gain fortifier when you deal direct damage while berserking so if you double swing you got a 30 percent chance of 35 percent chance so it's like a 11 12 percent chance you gain fortify whenever you deal direct damage and you're gonna always be berserking so this is just going to be stacking for on top of you non-stop you're just hitting so damn fast and you're always berserking so this is a way to just keep you healing just keep you healthy uh so it's nice to have considering we don't have much other tools to do that then we have critical strike with core skills increase your attack speed by 40 percent for three seconds so another reason why you want crit so it increases your attack speed attack speed is really rare it's hard to increase your attack speed so you just get a huge boost to attack speed when you crit with your double swing. Uh, this is also very good with Whirlwind if you decide to go that path. Uh, Relentless Berserker's Aspect. It's another lucky hit. Damaging enemies with the core skill has up to a 40% chance to extend the duration of Berserking by one second. That's really good in itself. But double this duration if it was a critical strike. So it's yet another reason to go for crit. Uh, it extends the duration and it's a core skill and your core skill in extends the duration as well so it's just, just making your double swing even better then we have whenever you deal direct damage while berserking which you always be doing 40 percent of the base damage is dealt as bleeding damage over five seconds now this is one way to to utilize bleed and by utilizing bleed we can go into a paragon board that uh gets bonuses from that so if we have uh, aspect of berserk ripping it it just it's just an extra boost of damage that we can have and you'll see why with the paragon board soon why that is quite valuable so basic skills get uh 33 extra attack speed with rapid aspect so this will just be even faster so it's 60 70 80 93 percent extra attack speed for frenzy which means that you're just going to be hitting stupidly fast 
And if anything that applies an effect when you hit, this is just going to be happening so often. All right. And then we have gain six fury per second while berserking. So you're just always generating fury. And this is something I mentioned right at the start of the build. And you have other ways of generating a ton of fury. And this is one of them. So it might get to the stage where you generate fury so damn quickly that you can unleash double swing after double swing after double swing without worrying. So speaking of casting double swing after double swing, you do it twice within 1.5 seconds, which will not be hard at all considering how fast you're going to get. It creates a dust devil behind you that deals the first flat amount of damage that I've seen on this build yet behind enemies. So that just gives you a little bit of an AoE. And this is the first skill that does amount of damage based on the item all right while berserking you deal another set amount of damage as fire damage to surrounding enemies so you get a little bit more aoe with these two uh you'll always be berserking so you'll always be getting these effects off then we have the grandfather i just wanted to highlight this unique sword because it increases your critical strike damage by 100 and with this build crits matter more than they do with other builds because you'll be attacking so often a five percent for example crit chance it happens a lot more often because it's a flat five percent so the more you hit the more chance that comes up so if your critical strike damage is increased by a lot and you'll be critting a lot more often than other builds this is going to improve your dps by an astronomical amount also the grandfather is it rolls very high with other stats and those stats can include things like crit so boom this will really help your build now let's look at the paragon board which really pulls it all together you want to go for dexterity first like the other builds and you want to go for strength and that's it those two always dexterity or strength it's all you need so don't worry about willpower go down strength Go get physical damage. Don't worry too much about life. Don't worry about much about any of that stuff. Just go all the way through. The first board is Carnage. While berserking, critical strikes increase your attack speed by 2% up to 10% for 6 seconds. This is another reason why you're going to crit. And this is why this is the sole reason why I thought crits would work so well with this build. And the way we've been building it is with crits in mind. is because it also increases your attack speed for everything for 10 seconds. And because it's so close to a glyph socket, this is almost guaranteed eventually to be covered by uh, that glyph itself. The radius is going to be covered. So this might be getting boosted by a high level glyph. Uh, and that could go up even more. That could be attack speed up to 20%. Who knows? But all of the other nodes around increase damage to berserking, increase damage to elites, which counts as uh, human opponents and bosses. You've got things like uh, healing over time, don't worry, but damage while berserking, and you've got, uh, where is it? And strength as well. So, strength and dexterity, very, very good nodes. All of these are very good nodes for a berserking build, and for this build in particular. And then we have Blood Rage. Now, remember when I said bleeding might pay, uh, uh come into effect with a particular Paragon board? This is the one. Killing... A bleeding enemy has a 12% chance to grant berserk for 5 seconds. So if we have everything bleeding, uh, or a lot of things bleeding, uh, then you just got another way of going berserk. And it's just a flat 12% chance. It's, a, it's pretty good, considering you'll be attacking so damn quickly. And then we also have the rare nodes and the, and the magic nodes that, that supplement this. So it's damage while berserking, berserking duration. We have... Uh, where is it? Enemy uh, damage reduction from enemies that are bleeding. You'll be spreading that bleed around. You've got damage to bleeding enemies, damage to elites. Uh, and, and that all just kind of works together. And then the final board that I want to cover is the Flawless Technique. You haven't seen this one yet because this is the first build where I encourage that you use one-handed weapons and you dual wield them. So damaging enemies with one-handed weapons increases your critical strike chance by 1% for 2 seconds up to 5%. This can only happen once per skill cast or twice per second while channeling whirling. So this is just another boost to your critical strike chance, which helps with your carnage, which helps with all your other skills. This board also provides damage to one-handers and attack speed, which is rare, and damage to close enemies, damage with one-handers, 
critical strike damage. This just supplements the build as well. So as you can see, without even running through how everything combos together, you've got a way to boost your attack speed. You've got very fast attacking frenzies, boosting up your, your, your fury very quickly. You've got very hard hitting double swings, which keep your berserking going. You've got a very powerful war cry, which keeps you berserking. It gives you a lot of damage multiplications. Uh, you got Leap, which makes you berserk as well. It staggers everything around you, slows everything around you, which gives you more crit. You've got the very high damage dealing Death Blow, which does extreme amounts of damage to bosses. It kills trash very quickly and then, and then cuts the cooldown down so you can keep berserking because it grants you berserk as well. You have another guaranteed way of berserking. You can be unstoppable and you can damage multiply while you're berserking while you're casting and burning all of your fury and then you've got just a flat increase to, to, to damage and with all your skills that bring it together this is a very potent late game build this is what you go if you just want to focus on damage if you just want to be a damaged barbarian this is the way you do it because there really isn't much gear that just says flat damage there's gear that give you damage to vulnerability like we went through there's there's gear that gives you more health there's gems that do the same, gems that give you thorns and all that stuff, but just pure damage, you get that from your weapon. If you want more damage, you're going to find ways to multiply it with skills like this, with, with increasing your crit chance, your, your crit damage, your attack speed, stuff like that. And this does all of that and it works all so, um, so uh, cohesively together. So those are the three builds. We have... You know, your fat boy, we have your ex-wife, and we have your Sonic with two shotguns. So tell me below which one you like the most. Tell me if this was helpful. Tell me what you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching. Now, if you want to win a copy of Diablo 4 thanks to NVIDIA, all you need to do is comment on my pinned comment below. You have to tell me what class you're going to play come release and what kind of build are you going to make with them? I would love to hear it. That's just for my own personal knowledge. I'd love to know what people are planning on going and I will announce a winner there in that in comment. So keep an eye on it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Let me know below as well what you want to see next and until next time, ciao friends.